got a little bit of grasp on what their draft is. So I'm looking forward to see what we're expecting here. But Hanzo being banned, this is something that the Chirma is actually respecting, and I don't understand why. You know, I haven't seen a really solid oh, game yesterday yet. Yesterday is where for it me, all happened. Team, so been. if you do see it, you'll understand why, because it's so hard to actually deal with. He's always in the safe position, and then uh, the reef regank potential, the, or you want to call it refract directly, it's absolutely fine. But no Your sun, is that is one of the core signature pick, which is why we see a lot of bands to sun. Not only on the day that they started day one, but day two was just a full train of hype on the sun pick. So no Kai as well, that leaves open the Beretta. Great options available out there, and the Shema definitely don't want to miss it. Oh, opening picks here is going to be Harley as well. As far south, very different picks from the usual playstyles coming from every single uh, creator thus far. The Chirma opening with a Benedetta. This is going to be a first time for me because the Chirma, usually they do have the tendency to pick something else. And for them to pick a Benedetta, is this a counter pick or is this just a respect pick here? And the Tigre and on a Roger, Ana Papa, bringing something different here. I was expecting the jaw head pick coming from him, but seems like Tigreo, is it because is they want to deny it from Pasti Menang? Well, yesterday um, Pasti Menang did show out the Tigreo pick as well, uh, and makes it's a very good way to actually uh, deny some of all these entry points or also to really put them on a disoriented position. Your Especially now you have a better data. It definitely helps a whole lot more. So, Somebody has to go into dive, not only Farsa, but also get a good pick over on Harley. So it's going to be there trying to actually get some good kick onto perhaps a bandit that is going to be a little bit pesky. And you don't want to kick the Tigreal. You probably won't be able to reach your hands on that Roger. So somebody your in uh, the side of Pasti Manang will have to find a gap closer. And I'm talking about that jaw hit, which is still on the table. And there's many of all the other picks. Today we saw Atlas, but I don't really think that it's going to be all too easy to get the hands on picks like Benedict as well as Roger once again. So, going towards this phase, what other options do we have? I see, Ooh, okay, the chill pick, I like it for the split push potential. We have the Benedict is also great for split push potential. Catch potential works as well, but uh, it makes a lot of sense why they want to pick Cho, just because it's a good counter against the Farsa. Kind of dodges a couple of uh, Federalists, right? Unless you're uh -huh. not pre-aiming it, which is which makes a lot of sense. But now, coming in from Pasti Manang, they need some sort of frontliner. And in this case, Alucard. Uh, 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 Alucard. Jungle. I uh, okay. have been waiting because yesterday Gideon and I were talking about what are the cheesiest picks that you can go for? Go, go, go for the Christian, go in for the Alcor. And yes, this is the second Yuzong that we are seeing, or should we say the third, because the last time it was played, the Chaman did go for such a pick okay. when they were going against Basti Menang. So, Your team very, very good answers overall. They can definitely cut off all the exit plans coming out of the life of Basti Munang to finish it off. Design. It's a cool Oh, game. wow. I haven't seen this for a long time. I like it. You know, having Valer here, going for the Syrian Torrent does buy a little bit of space, but the Alurukar pick, you know, I like it, but at the same time, the Yu Jong to respond to this means that we are going to be having the Yu Jong completely hoping to snowball with the Black Dragon to try and stall him off, but Based on this draft, this is very disruptive of the Jama, and currently I'm liking their drafts a little bit more. Yeah, I guess that there's also element of surprises coming from Basti Munang as well. And then towards the grand finals, yes, we do have a little bit of the visual flashes out there that tells you that yes, we are on the loading screen. We're getting ourselves into the land of dawn. Now, let's talk about this valley for a little bit because they do have some really good burst damage overall. And not only that, it's going to be a little bit difficult to really lock on towards the Valir because he can then also shove, shove some of them away and still have a little bit of a crop control negation. And I guess 
that's where Clavel will go in for that full change just to get that for lead. Yep, and to sum it up as of now here, they are putting all their money on Alucard, hoping to carry the later stage of the game, but they have Cho on your, uh, your on Cho has a, ca a potential side laner to actually catch Yu Jong on the 1v1 fight. Who's gonna take it? I don't know, but I've not seen how strong Yu Jong is with the War Axe coming into us the new patch here, and I'm looking forward to see how it all goes down. But ladies and gentlemen, this is game number two for the Grand Finals here with the best of five series and also Basti Menang with one game advantage. Well, to also add on top a little bit of the storyline, this honestly is the third time that we're fighting against each other back in the Nationals. Basti Menang has been able to win the first spot. Meanwhile, Tachoma comes in at second place. Now, a little bit of repeat over on towards the upper brackets as well. And we saw Basti Menang taking that win. So Tachamar definitely have a lot of pride at stake that they don't want to lose three times consecutively to Basti Menang. Here comes a push and shove. Papa's going to be able to actually secure a little bit of damage being done. But Papa, he's currently in danger. Has to force a flicker away. Here comes Claudia, though. Yeah, and, and seeing that this is going to be a disengage, it seems like a couple of skirmishes coming in. But Tachama, they still have the upper hand in terms of economy. Not, nothing surprising considering that in terms of wave clear, Basti Menang is going to lose out a lot, especially in early stage of game. Valer's wave clear is just a bit so-so. But uh, interesting enough, this is actually a tank for Lair. So AK Gaming going for a sacrificial role? Is this going to be enough? Because it feels like they don't exactly have a very, very strong frontliner, whereas the Chirma, they've got so many heroes. That's right, and I feel like the Chirma so far it can actually play it a little bit safely in towards the early game because one thing for sure, yes, they do have a lot of great uh, fighting ability, but the problem is that they need to scale first before even committing. That's why they're not really all too forceful coming into certain invades or even certain pickoffs. But we do have a first block happening over bomb side and a bike goes down. It's going to be or or Q Ryu where we just get ourselves some big kills coming for Fury. Yeah, very nice execute coming for him. But now with the first black dragon coming in here, he's gonna try to slow down AK gaming with the flicker coming in, missing the mark, and that's gonna be him down for the cow. But Yor tries to salvage the fight with the wave of the dragon, trying to finish off out of Polos. Unfortunately gets caught out and he gets pulled back but he manages to flick away and get out of the sticky situation. So watching for him he's gonna be A okay. But that's gonna be one for one coming from both these teams. But the turtle is gonna be contest here coming in from Tachoma. Oh reset. Seems like they are gonna let the reset in as Basti Murnau is uh, does have a lot of help to work with. I guess it's pretty much of a decent effort being shown right there. Now Anabai oh, gonna wow. be it down. That the magic already being popped up. He should be able to survive this one to tell the tale at the very least. Pop up! No, not for long. Wow, what a burst coming out. And that's where you see AK Gaming secures a little bit more of that room for himself. But Yordo seems to be struggling against the user. Yeah, Yo is looking for a setup and they have a rough idea where he is. You, just because the Chilma, uh, the Yujong was able to scout this out. So that's going to be him securing the gold crab away from Arakui Panda. But Turtle, he's going to start his way here. He can solve it this very, very easily. So the Chilma, they have to go in for the contest. Black Dragon is still available. He's getting isolated by Cho with the wave of Dragon. Yo trying to go for the challenge. However, on the sides as well, Hardy on the bottom, they will kill, uh, get a solo kill against Anabai. Yor now going for the push here. Black Dragon comes in. Yor is going to be able disengage. He doesn't have the flicker, but it seems to be they just do not have enough damage. But here comes the implosion. Catches the AK Gaming. But Valer so tanky, and he's going to pay the price thinking to pick a fight against Valer. This is not the traditional tank uh, Valer. This is a tank Valer. Okay. Tank Valer is definitely very, very annoying to deal with now that oh. you always think of, you know, going in right after oh, him. Oh, wow. But here comes Federer Airstrike. That will be, of course, Getting them aside, then some reason there will be a little bit of a pause. Yeah, and seeing how this is actually going here, I I, I would say a great cash coming with Feather Ash right as well because of the Feather Super Head. All right, so this is where we uh, hit right back into action. Four minutes, thirty-seven seconds. Immediately going for another kill. Plus, Nimanang now going on a straight back as DC now 
running right back at him. Ryu goes out, and that's a big shutdown, but Panado goes in for a dive, going into the lightning form, but Panado will not be able to actually get too much of a clearance until the fairy airstrike actually hits them right over the corners. Papa as well as Polos have to really hold back. Yeah, Mixed Re Gaming is doing so well in this kind of side fights where his Feather Airstrike has been isolating some of the uh, the frontliners coming from the Chirma, and it's just super, super hard to actually fight it off just because they don't exactly have the utilities or regeneration to actually uh, take a drawn out fight. So, Panna, he's farming very efficiently, he's got a turtle buff, he's got one kill thus far, and he's been uncontested yet. And Ana Papa now getting harassed by Ike Gaming, which arguably, oh no, is not looking good. There's nothing much he could have done. Now, with the Wave Dragon pickup on the side, this is also not looking good for the Chirma. Oh, well, quite a difficult start for themselves, and this is what we talk about, right? Early game advantages, especially when you have so much burst potential. Now, Mixery really playing very professionally as a over as Farsa as well. Here comes the first turtle. Oh, the Black Dragon. Here comes the Black Dragon. He's going to try and isolate his way through here. It's all up to Anago to go to full push, but AK Gaming held on the certain Torrin for the longest time. Finding his pop is well, but Anabai taking a little bit too much. He's going to get chucked away. It seems like Valor is just super annoying here as uh, AK Gaming going to be able to survive the missive Raw and Rio, do so much damage. And Rio going to go for the fight as well. The size that comes oh. in, but now the pick off as well again. Oh my goodness, what is going on? Well, I guess in all of all these calamity and chaos, Pastimana has been able to, of course, get the better advantages, as especially when they also get the turtle in hand. AK Gaming just going in for a little bit more of a flex and back towards the top side. Yeah, this Everyone is, a, is just pushing real hard. This is a big flex coming from Basti Menang as uh, they have been able to just get every sort of pickups from the sides. AK Gaming on this tank row has been extremely annoying and his decision making of withholding his spells has been very spot on to keep him alive. Meanwhile, Anabai going to take a little bit too much. Yor does not have the flick to go in for the follow-up, but that's going to be him going to reset. But Mixed Re Gaming, Red Astride. Astride checking him as well. Clips in at the side, Ooh. but the passive coming in will be enough to finish him off. Off. What an insane game sense coming from Mystery Gaming. What a way to really demolish them, even right under the turret. They're not exactly safe. Mystery with some really big brain plays out there. And now Bagus is going to be able to clear the buff. So, just going to be a little bit of soul starter here. 22 to 17 what? at the moment. <laughs> Look at the Yor. Okay. This is stalking him from across here. And he's looking well for the setup, but here comes the implosion coming in. But Siri Tower will stop the ball. Oh, oh you are all trapped right there. That's going to be a big blunder here coming from Big Street Gaming. He's going to get caught up, but here comes the counting engagement here with the Black Dragon. Trying to stall him out, but AK Gaming, he survives still. How is this guy so tanky? They're just way, way, way too good overall. Now, Basti Menang. They know what exactly to do, and you can see that they're so comfortable playing all these assassins, mages as well. That could see the viewers now being bought there by the Farsa. Oh. Now that comes right in. Oh! What? A complete blow up. Have you ever seen a better going 1 7? Yep. Oh my god. That goodness. just happened. Yeah, that just happened. And of course, Rio is going to be punished for that as well as he gets punished for that fight. But a little bit of freestyle style points coming in from uh, Pasti Menang, where you're holding the We of the Dragon for the longest of time and finally goes in for the finish. Just enough damage to chunk it away at him. And this is not a great game for Anabai. He's got died seven times in eight minutes. And it seems like Pasti Menang, they're looking to go in for uh, another kill on towards him. But this time, are they going to go for the switch up? Seems like they are going to try and contest this again. But they are 5k ahead. But the turtle will be secure. Panda looking for the fight. AK Gaming is going to get caught out. Is he going to go down? He gets pulled back. Here comes the Panda trying to wait for the assist. But AK Gaming super attacky. He has oh. the corner, But here comes the fall off and finally takes him out. But he took almost everything. But here comes Panda. The implosion available. Pulls him back. This is a trap. Okay. He needs to back out. No support whatsoever gets completely obliterated and that's gonna be a double kill for Anapolos. So far, this is where Basti Manai has been able to just go in for a very, very over the place. And to Chima have found a little bit of opportunity, you know, punish them for it, rightfully so. So it's not going to be all too clear cut as we speak. Like I mentioned before, to Chima, the more time being bought, the better the chances to actually come right back into the game.
because this is more of like a late game insurance kind of lineup if you really want to look at it. But that uh, definitely works a lot better into his late game. Same goes with Roger as well. But to even get there, you need like what? Maybe the next 10 minutes or so. Agreed. Yo, gonna be uh, going for the creep clear. He's gonna be stalking into the bottom side, hoping to pressure the lane a little bit more. 50 seconds left before the Lord comes in. Anabai and Anagal hoping that this Cho is gonna go in for a punish, but finally they are gonna review themselves to clear the creep bay. But Yo, just staying super, super chill down bottom. He needs to be careful, but while that's happening, AK Gaming gets focused on the top side. The Fender X strike goes in for the snowball, and Rio is gonna win the fight. He tries to back out, but it gets caught out with the approaches. So that's gonna be a one for one trade. Rio and also Anapolos. AK Gaming have only survived with the uh -oh. literally uh -oh. one uh -oh. HP. Uh -oh. Wait, just chill for a bit. Okay, I guess okay, okay. he's fine. He's fine. Yeah, he's fine. He's, he's fine. fine. He's fine. He's fine. Just give him a little spacing. Now he wants to actually go in for a little bit of slide. At least getting a lot of information. So this gives the Alcard a free shove over the top portion of the map. Meanwhile, to Chima. It seems like they're rushing for picks for some reason. Oh, yo, he's used up the Jeet Kune Do means that's going to be an opportunity going for like a bounce here. He goes into a flicker, but it's a little bit too much. Wave Dragon is going to save his life. Oh my gosh, he does have the damage. He does have the mobility, but fortunately, the tier one is going to save his life. But that means space created from oh. your the Lord Alphagrad and the disrespect coming from your what's up, brother? Space created. Everyone from Sai Tanjama is going to run up on top, but the Lord, the Lord is dropping so low. That means he do not have response. The and Airstrike also gonna zone them out. Rest play purchase up on your means more mobility up on your. That's right. And of course, he just goes in your face all the time. So going back towards the side of Kachilmar, um I don't think that they're all too far behind. And speaking of which, you know, another pass comes right in. Maybe some of all these technicalities have been, you know, causing it to be a little bit more difficult for the likes of Oreo to deal with. Now, moving back in the game, we are already about at the 12th minute mark. 14. Now, Plasty Minang getting a little bit of a leeway there. Right down below. And now, even. Already at the deficit, and with the Lord knocking the dragon by time, but unfortunately, he just does not have the damage. You're just making ways through here. Anapapa going for pool, and Anapapa getting chipped down away as well. Will he actually die to deadly magic? No, he will not. He's gonna survive this, but the tier trees are gonna be exposed. Bottom side as well. Ana goes trying his best to defend against this, whereas Pasti Mana is gonna continue snowballing his way through. Mixed Street Gaming. Oh no, getting focused on his bottles here, but the Sering Torch just disposition him, but they're taking so low, and the Black Dragon re engages his fight. That's gonna go completely shut him off, and Baga. He's gonna try and go and go in for the push while this is all actually happening. But Panda, it's just so strong, and Mania. that's gonna be a maniac coming for him. And that's gonna be all for Pasti Mana as they will take another game against Tachama. That means they are gonna be leading 2 and 0 against Tachama. Wow, a maniac in the grand finals, and it's an 